Hi, my name is John Richardson, and uh, I've been on staff here at the Alamo for the past 19 years. Today, we're going to be talking about the topic of annexation of Texas, uh, specifically the roots of annexation, where this process all began. It's a very complex process, and it's a lengthy one. So uh, the roots of annexation actually go back to the very turn of the 19th century, 1800. There is a secret treaty between uh, two European superpowers, um, France and Spain. In short, they're exchanging uh, what is referenced as Louisiana territory. So it was under Spanish control. Prior to that, now it will be under French control as of 1800. And that's important because uh, that obviously is going to give France increased influence in uh, the New World. And certainly that caught the attention of those uh, in the United States, particularly President Thomas Jefferson. So uh, he felt a reduced uh, French presence would be uh, more helpful to the future of, of United States interests, particularly in terms of what's happening in the western part of the country. Uh, so that really began uh, the process of uh, trying to acquire, at the very least, uh, access to uh, continued access to the Mississippi River, and also the right to purchase uh, New Orleans, a very important port, of course. So that was the initial idea in terms of uh, what the United States needed to uh, acquire as a result of that secret treaty. And of course, as we, most of us know, that led to uh, much more than just continued access to the Mississippi River, uh, right to purchase New Orleans. It was actually the purchase of that entire territory uh, by the United States 1803. Uh, that was actually done by two uh, ministers, envoys to uh, France, um, Robert Livingston and uh, James Monroe, at that time was Secretary of State. And uh, of course, Louisiana purchased a huge expanse of territory, as we all know. Uh, one thing that people aren't aware of, uh, there's no boundary definitions in that treaty or in that fact, for that matter, any other previous treaty. So the good news, the United States at least, they've acquired this huge expanse of territory. Uh, the bad news is they don't know exactly what they bought. And of course that leads to the Lewis and Clark expedition, uh, which helps explore that. And in terms of the boundary issues, there were those in the United States uh, which believed that uh, that territory they acquired actually did go into Texas, uh, specifically the Red River Valley from the north and the Sabine River Valley from the east going west into Texas. So those were things already being uh, debated uh, in uh, the early 19th century. So those boundary questions in terms of you know exactly how far Louisiana territory went, did it actually go into part of what we now consider to be Texas. That was not ultimately resolved to another treaty, which was uh, signed in 1819. Uh, it's known as the adams onis Treaty, uh, sometimes referred to as the Florida Purchase Treaty. Adams uh, was actually John Quincy Adams, at that time Secretary of State, and uh, Onis was the Luis de Onis, who was uh, envoy from Spain. Uh, the short version of that treaty is the uh, United States uh, conceded all claims to Texas. They basically gave up their, any claim they might have to any part of Texas, they gave up. In exchange for that, uh, Spain ceded Florida to the United States. So that's why it's sometimes referred to as the Florida Purchase Treaty, but it's actually called the adams onis Treaty. And uh, of course, treaties are sometimes met with, uh, you know, approval and disapproval by the public. And there were many in the American South particularly, and even some of the Northern neighbors, but particularly the American South, because they're closer to the area, uh, did not agree with the uh, agreement of that treaty. Uh, you know, they felt that someone, uh, in this case, John Quincy Adams from, from Massachusetts, uh, you know, didn't really have uh, the wherewithal to understand uh, what was needed for the development of that part of the United States, the southern part. And so there was even still disagreement after that. Of course, uh, that is uh, getting us in now into the 1820s. Uh, Mexico is free from Spain by 1821. And uh, shortly after that, you begin uh, the Anglo colonization of Texas uh, through Mexican colonization laws. And so you have the influx 
of American citizens and people of uh, European ancestry moving into the United States and going further west into Texas. And you see increased American influence because of that and obviously decreased Mexican influence. So that also uh, leads to uh, the idea of potentially Texas uh, joining the United States. Of course, uh, Texas is known for its revolution, uh, which occurred 1835-36, uh, and uh, that's a whole other topic, of course, but the very short version of that would be uh, a Mexican Civil War begins in the 1820s over the question of whether common people have a right to uh, govern each other, and uh, they're going to uh, have a revolution and revolution leads to uh, independence and that's going to lead now to the question of should Texas remain independent or actually be annexed or join the United States by some way, shape or form. So those are really the roots of the process of how this all began in the annexation of Texas.